I'm real and raw, you know. Um, we'll work on that fat, that flashy uh, uh, PowerPoint later. But um, so to kind of quickly like dive into this a little bit, guys. Thanks everyone for coming. I love you know full room. I don't know if you guys were here for for Daniel's class or if you guys are staying for the for the afternoon, but. Uh, you know, obviously, as much as you guys can get tapped in, it's always the better, I, or, or it's always, you know, it's better. So, um, you know, again, you know, thank you guys for, for making it today. Um, this is something I haven't done for, I don't know, maybe six, eight months. I haven't been been uh, on the actual stage. I don't know if you guys have come to the masterminds. I know a few around the room have come to the, to the masterminds, you know, but um, guys, these are the things that we like, we love to do. You know, part of like what Workshop Wednesday, like when we first, you know, launched this is like really, truly... You know, again, back to me not having a PowerPoint. Like, I want this to be interactive. You know, like it's not just all my show. It should be any of the, you know, speakers' show. This should be really, you know, like I, I implore you guys to ask questions. Um, I don't know that there's going to be quite enough time. Okay, thank you. You're doing a very great assistant. Um, you know, I don't know if there's going to be quite a lot of, or enough time to uh, to dive into this. I am going to go a little bit fast today. You know, I usually do this like over the course of like 90 minutes or two hours, you know, and I'm gonna kind of condense it a little bit. But, um, you know, if there's any follow-up questions, guys, these are the things, these are the things that we love to talk about, right? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you guys and tell you that I love to talk about your guys' contract hurdles or the things that you're, you're, like, that's why we have a broker hotline, that's why we have Larry, that's why we have John, right? Like, that's what they're in place for. They're better than I am at that stuff, you know? Um, but, you know, there's probably things, hopefully, that I'm better than they are at certain things, right? So these, again, these are the conversations that we love to have. You guys want to talk about building a business, um, not that we're the end-all be-all, right? But I listen, I pay attention, I know what our top producers are doing, I know what people around the country are doing, I talk to coaches that are on a national level. You know, we're tapped into these kinds of things. So if you guys want to have these conversations, I imagine everybody in this room does. You wouldn't be in this room if, if you don't want to have these conversations. These are the things that we love to do, that we love to talk about, me, Mark, and myself, right? Um, so again, for your support, you know, call the broker hotline. You know, uh, you want to talk about business building, you know, growing, leverage, uh, all those things, please, guys. I mean, you, you, you know, come come to us. You know what I mean? So, you know, a few these things um, that, that you see on the list, again, um, some of these things aren't rocket science. Some of these things are common sense, but it's not always common practice. So I, I without trying to say that I'm going to, you know, be beating people over the head, like we talk about these things a lot. You know, and if some of these things, again, you might have heard before, you might already be doing in your business, you might, you might understand, right? Uh, you might have heard them from other people out there in the marketplace or other people that are speaking, you know, whether it be here locally or on a national scale, right? Um, but these are things that, whether you're a new agent, whether you're trying to grow, whether you're like Becky Garcia doing 300 deals a year, I think that these are common things that you have to, we all have to, you know, understand um, as we continue to build our business, right? As we continue to grow, you know. Um, so, kind of, you know, diving into this a little bit. You know, as you guys all see, the first thing on the on the on the board here, right? Um, you know, guys, what's the most important thing in this business? You know, lead generation, right? Lead generation cures everything. It's like it's like winning in sports, right? You might have a whole bunch of drama and trouble going on in the locker room, but if you're winning on the field, everything's good, right? You know, it's the same concept. If, if you are a lead generating machine, if deals fall out of escrow, people can't get qualified last minute, they buy a car three days before closing, all those things, right? First of all, we can't control that stuff, so we don't wanna worry about it first and foremost. But if you're a lead generating machine, that cures everything, right? If the pipeline is full, that cures everything. So I think there, it all comes back to there's two ways to get business. It all comes back to two ways to get business. You're either going to be a prospector or you're going to be a marketer, right? Some of you have heard this before. It's it. Everything can be traced back to one of those two funnels. So those are wildly different things. A lot of times people, well, I'm putting it in the same sentence here today, but a lot of times people want to put those things in the same sentence, right? You know, marketing, prospecting, like they're the same or like they're similar. It's not. Those are so wildly different. It, there's it's such a huge difference between prospecting and marketing. Marketing is a defensive action. I'm going to put a piece out into the marketplace. I'm going to do a radio ad. I'm going to do a billboard. I'm going to do whatever, and I'm going to put it out into the marketplace, and I'm going to sit by my phone and hope you guys call me. Right? It's a defensive action. Right? 
you can, of course, you can control the timing and you can control the delivery and the platform and the message and all those kinds of things, but it's a defensive action, right? Versus prospecting is a wildly offensive action. You know, prospecting is, is reaching across the table for business, right? It's doing an activity that gets you in front of people or gets you a contact or gets to have a conversation, right? So that you can then try to secure to secure and you know obtain the business. So, um, you know, what are the things we talk about? You know, with, with prospecting, you know, we can we can try to reach across the table one on one. You know, I could try to do an open house and I could try to, to, to talk to, to somebody one on one. You know, um, I don't know. Does anybody in the room right now trying to prospect for channel accounts? Okay, there you go. So we can make a one-on-one -on -one call. I can do a one-on-one -on -one activity, or you can spend some time. I don't know what kind of channel accounts you're trying to go after. Lenders, mortgage companies. Okay. So I met with Loan Depot today, and then I'm meeting with Guild Mortgage on Friday. Okay. Just to try and build business together. Trying to get like their relocation referrals or something. Hey guys, a real quick, a channel account is like something like we're talking about here. A channel account is an opportunity to get more than just one piece of business, right? If I have a buyer, they want to buy a home, right? That's one deal, right? You know, we always, before I get too far on that, we always like to say list to exist, right? We all should be trying to go after listings because listings have the opportunity to turn into multiple transactions, right? You take on a seller, chances are they want to turn around and buy, or you get a sign call, and then three doors down wants to sell, and then they want to turn around and buy, right? You have the opportunity to get multiple transactions through listings. So we've always said at the core of us, you know, do whatever the heck you got to do to get listings, right? Signs and yards, banners and yards. But back to channel accounts, right? So that could be a relocation company. That could be a national lender, right, that could be sending you leads on, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it could be a divorce attorney, right? The average divorce attorney, I think, is doing 30 deals a month or 30 uh, uh, divorces a month, right? So that could be 30 sales, sales, 30 by, uh, or you know, now 60 purchases. It could potentially be 90 deals. Call it 50 deals. Call it whatever. If you're able to get a portion of those referrals, right, that could change everyone in this room's lives, right? If you got five extra deals a month, what's that going to do to your to your livelihood, right? So. Um, again, that, that's something right now that you can that you can go after when you're prospecting, right? So, you you do an activity, you try to get after one person. You can pick up the phone, you can try to set relationships and try to go after channel accounts that have the opportunity to turn into multiple transactions, right? Uh, obviously, to build a business, the one-on-one, -on -one, okay, is very very ineffective. I'm not. I don't want to say that it's ineffective. It's potentially you know, inefficient, right? The one-on-one, -on -one, you know, same thing for us, guys. Like with what we're trying to grow, you know, the brokerage and trying to get around the country. And, the, you know, one-on-one -on -one is not how we're going to do it. We want to be able to do it, you know, in groups. So, um, and a lot of things, guys, that, you know, I know some people are going to, maybe you're thinking already, maybe you will. Now I'm going to put it in your head if you are. Is that you're going to maybe look at me and say, well, hey, you're not in production. What the hell do you know, Right. Uh, but again, I pay attention, I listen, I was in production, and I lived it, but the point is, is that the principles of what we're trying to do in terms of growing a business, growing an organization, is the same things that you guys should be doing in terms of growing your business. The principles are the absolute same, right? Or very, very similar, okay? Um, so, um, you know, again, guys, I, I, I have here, you know, offensive pillar activities, okay? Um, what's a pillar? What's a pillar of your business? That's a lead source, something holding it up. Right? Sure. I mean, it could be, you know, I, when I talk about pillars of your business, I, I'm a big fan or big believer that everyone in this room at some point should be able to uh, identify two, three, four things mm -hmm. where you say, this is, the, this is a pillar of my business, right? I have a channel account that sends me X amount of deals per year. That is a pillar. You know, I'm an open house, you know, junkie, and that is a pillar. If I can get face to face with people, that, that works, it wins for every, you know, we'll get to numbers and things like that later, but for every X amount I do, I get a deal, right? That becomes a pillar of business. Maybe it's banging the phones, calling canceled, expired, whatever it is. I think that you all have to be thinking 
on a, on a daily basis, and some of you, I guarantee, because I know there's some producers in this room right now, that you know what your pill the pillars of your business are, right? You know, if you don't, it's something to start thinking about, right? What are those going to be? You know, what are what are your strengths, and what are the pillars of your business going to be, right? I mean, to think about a couple of our agents that come to mind. You know, I don't know if anybody in the or if everybody in the room knows Steve Panate, right? Uh, his pillar is video, right? So he has Steve Talks Real Estate Show. He connects with his entire world, his entire database, his friends, his family, everyone in between, and he does videos. That look makes him, first of all, makes him a rock star, right? I'm sure you heard us maybe having at some point that the human mind cannot discern the difference of a talking head on a big screen movie theater or on your device. So the more you do video, right? The more people see a walking, talking, breathing head, you're creating yourself, you're turning yourself into a celebrity. You're artificially creating and, and molding yourself into a celebrity, right? So Steve's pillar is video. Daniel Barraza was just in here. Who was in Daniel's class? What's his pillar? His database, right? His database is his absolute pillar, right? And so kind of that kind of takes me, you know, to, you know, guys, this one and two, okay, I have these on here in a general order. They don't need to necessarily be the order that you see here. But guys, the offensive pillar activities, deciding what those pillars are going to be, deciding what those activities are going to be, those prospecting activities and going on the offensive, right? Guys, you can control that, right? You can control those things. There's a lot in this world we can't control, but you can control those things, okay? A close second, if not first, Okay, is human connection. For those of you that have been around here any more than a short time, you've probably heard us say human connection a hundred times. You're tired of it, I know you are. Um, this is a human connection, human resource business, right? People work with people. You've all probably heard people work with who they know, like, and trust, right? People aren't saying, hey, look, you know, I, I want to go buy a home and I must have an ABC Realty agent, an XYZ, a My Home Group agent, right? People are like, I want to go buy a home and I want to work with Becky because she's the best, right? Or she farms the hell out of my neighborhood and I'm so sick of seeing her face, I'm just going to use her. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I mean, people work with people. Guys, that's why we've always wanted to brand you guys. And this is another one thing that, that we'll get to. This is why we want to brand you guys. This is why, you know, we want to put you in bright, shining lights, giving you guys the ability to not have to fit within a, a, a box, right, where the logo goes here and the brand goes here, and this is how it must look and feel, and we're all the same, right? Like, how do you guys connect with your people? We've all heard your, your, your database is your gold mine, right? Or maybe, you know, we've heard it, your, it's your data bank, right? The list of the people. So we have all these distractions in our marketplace right now, in our industry, right? These technologies, these disruptors, everyone wants to talk about the next shiny object, all this BS. If anyone heard the dose this morning, I'm a little fired up about this topic right now. So the Daily Dose podcast, we'll get to that later. Get on the podcast, will ya? No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, but you know, there's all these distractions, there's all these things going on. What cures all of that? What, what, are, what is your gold mine? Your database is your gold mine. No one should have the upper hand over you with your database and your gold mine. So what are you doing with them? How are you nurturing that? How are you staying top of mind? How are you staying current? You just heard 52 ways to stay current and top of mind and relevant with that, right? We have a responsibility. We have a responsibility as agents, okay, to get into relationship with as many people as we possibly can. And then how do we move the needle from a relationship to professional trust, right? We, that is our responsibility. Guys, people aren't picking agents based on who can write the best contract, who searches the MLS the best, who's got the nicest car when they're out there showing property. They're based on the connection that you have with people and if they respect you, like you, trust you, right? Period. Are you a resource for people? Are you paying attention on all the channels and social media when people need something? Are you connecting the dots for people? You know, do you guys have a list of your favorite vendors? 
your favorite attorney, your favorite this, your favorite that. So when someone says, hey, I, I need somebody, you're the person. You're the resource for them, right? It's vital that we understand that this is a human connection, human resource business, right? Um, we've always looked at it like a bank account. You haven't seen your buddy since high school, right? You can't just go up, hey, good to see you. Ready to buy or sell a house? Like, come on, dude, get off the fence already, <laughs> right? Like, that doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? It's just like going up to the ATM. I just opened my account over at wherever. I can't just go right up to the ATM and try to get a withdrawal, right? It doesn't work like that. But if you deposit, 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 add value, add value, add value, make some deposits into the bank account, now I can go up and I can ask for withdrawal. It's a lot easier to ask for the business, okay? If you've made countless withdrawals and, or, or, or countless deposits into the, into the relationship, okay? So asking ourselves every single day, how am I making deposits into the relationship? How am I nurturing the relationships, right? How am I, how am I moving the needle from a relationship, okay, to professional trust? And again, guys, back to all these technologies and this system and this app and that. Guys, now it is more important than ever to be human, to be human, to be, to be real, to connect with people. Okay, I haven't seen Daniel's you know, class in, in its entirety, but I, I imagine some of the things that he's doing with his database is that he's paying attention when people have life events, right? <clears throat> Connect, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. People have life, life events. Someone gets married, someone unfortunately passes away, someone, you know, all these things. That's an opportunity for you to reach out and build a deeper relationship. Okay? One thing that I know that Daniel does do and a lot of other folks that are doing, you know, you know, producing at a very, very high level is there's a different experience, right? If someone has never bought or sold with you and you don't know that they ever will, that's a different experience the way that you interact and exchange with that person than somebody that could be your, your A client, right? Maybe someone that's bought a property from you or sold or maybe a couple properties or has referred you somebody, right? I know he does the 50 favorite clients. So who are your 50 favorite clients? You know, what, what does that experience look like, right? What does the experience look like? How does it look and feel for your 50 favorite clients, right? Nurturing those relationships. Um, so guys, kind of moving along, and I gotta keep me timed on task, or tasked on time here. Um, so guys, we have two jobs every single day. Does anyone know what they are? Has anyone heard me say this before? <laughs> or you just have the answer. <laughs> what, what are you, you going to say? I'm curious. Number one, lead gen. Number two, taking care of your database. I mean, it's close enough, right? What, what, what two jobs are we going to do every day? What activities are we going to do every single day to bring people into our world? And what are we going to deliver? Right? Every single day. What activity are you going to do today to bring people into your world and what are you going to then deliver? And I don't mean something of you know monetary value or 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 you know whatever, right? But what are you going to deliver people of value? You know, a simple tact you know tactic of you know what do sellers want to know? What do homeowners want to know? How much their homes worth? So does everyone in here right now have a, a a campaign for every homeowner that they know in the MLS so that every time some, something sells within a mile radius, it's a like for like, they get an automatic email. Guys, we all got a CRM. You know, again, back to the next shiny object. Where's my CRM? Right, you all have one right now. Okay, so grab your 50 favorite clients, put them on an auto search within a mile, like for like of, where, of what they own, and now once it's done and created, you don't have to think about a thing, it's done. It's done, right? That's what homeowners want to know. They want to know what their home is worth, right? Simple, simple. So, you know, if it's, if it's not for a seller, well, I come back to, you know, what are you delivering to folks every single day, right? So is it a statistic? Is it an up market update? Is it a newsletter? Is it tickets to a game for your, you know, your 50 favorite people or whatever it is? But what are you delivering of value? How are you, how are you that source of knowledge, right? How are you that source of knowledge? Um, Guys, I want to back up real quick um, to human connection because I made a note, or as you guys can see, this multi-channel database. Is anyone actually you know, wondering what that is? Is anyone wondering what it is when I say a multi-channel database? 
Guys, how do people how do people connect with you guys, or how do people want to interact with you guys? How do they want to communicate with you? Text. Some people want an email. Some people want a text. Some people want to call. Right? Younger generations probably like, don't ever call me again. I hate you. Text me. Right? Snapchat. Whatever. Right? You know. But the point is, is that we also have a responsibility to communicate with people how they communicate with us. Right? So I we call it omni-channel call it multi-channel database, but I think it's very, very important, and again, it's become, becoming more and more important as we go into the future, to be on all the different channels that people want to operate and want to communicate with you, right? So omni-channel, what's that mean? I can grab one piece of, of information, I could do a market update, for just as an example, right? I could do a market update, I could post it on Facebook, I could post it on Instagram, I could post it on YouTube, I could email it out, I could text it out, I could call and tell people about it, whatever, right? So now you're taking one piece of data, one function, and you're putting it across all the different channels that people want and expect to see you on, right? So that's what I mean when I talk about omni-channel. Um, you know, same with a website, right? And all these different things. Being on all the channels and operating on all the channels that people expect you to be. So again, moving on. Two, two jobs every day. What activities are you going to do to bring people into your world today? Every day when you wake up. What are you going to deliver to people? Right? We've all heard the statistic, you know, X amount of people buy a home and they like their realtor. What is it, 89% or some shit, right? That said, oh, I liked my agent, but 11% 11 reuse that person. Right? Or something ridiculous because they forgot about who they were, right? They forgot about who their agent was or they didn't stay in contact with them or they didn't stay current, top of mind, irrelevant. You know what I mean? So, guys, we're in a we're going in we're in a society now where just people aren't loyal. Period. Right? People aren't as loyal as they used to be, right? Unfortunately. So again, it's more important to stay to constantly be making deposits, constantly giving value, giving an update. Here's something that I found that, or or that you might have find value in. You know, here's something that, you know, I thought you might have interest in, or I thought you might need this, or, you know, whatever it may be, but looking for those opportunities to send those things out. Guys, who's, who's familiar on the same, you know, two jobs every single day with lead measures and lag measures? Familiar with that? Right? So you're talking like leading as far as appointments, uh, your phone calls, appointments, and then lag measures like contracts? Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that. That's you know, good, good for sure. Absolutely, guys. Lead measures and lag measures. I think that this is um, this is a again another foundational component for every business owner on planet Earth. Okay. What are your lead measures? Right. The lag. Th those are those are the activities. Right. Those are the things that you can do that you can control. Right. The lag measures are the results. Right. So if we wake up in the morning and we're looking at our bank account or we're looking and say, I didn't close any deals this month, that's the result of what happened 30, 60, 90 days ago, right? You can't control waking up in the morning and being frustrated because you don't have any closings or not enough closings or whatever, right? It's the same thing if like you're trying to, you know, lose weight and you get on the scale in the morning and they're like, oh man, like F you scale, <laughs> throw that thing out the window, right? Like you can't control that. You know, that's the lag measure. That's the result, right? You know, but if you back it up, okay, well, what's the lead measures that gets me when I look at that, right? Okay, well, if I control my diet, if I move around more, if I stop drinking milkshakes at midnight, like there's a few <laughs> things I can do, you know, you know what I mean, right? So if I, I focus on those things, then it gets me to the results, right? Guys, you can't control the lag measures. You can't necessarily... I don't want to say that you can't control what your bank account looks like, but you can't control what it looks like this morning, right? This is the result of what's happened, right? What you can control are the lead measures. Every person in this room can control your lead measures, right? So your lead measures are like your activities. It comes back to the very first thing on this, on this sheet. What are the lead measures, what are the indicators for you and your business, right? Maybe it's open houses. For every open house I do, I get X amount of prospects that are turned into deals, right? 
So if I want to increase that, then I can say, hey, look, I'm going to do 20 open houses this month. I'm going to make 1,000 calls this month. I'm going to make 100 calls to businesses this month, right, to try to get channel accounts, right? You can control if you're going to make five calls to businesses or 50 calls to businesses, right? You can control mm -hmm. that. You can't control if the deal falls out of escrow. You can't control if somebody, you know, you know, decides to go buy a home, a new home subdivision, you know what I mean? Like you can't control all those things, but you can control 100%. You can control your lead measures, right? And your lead measures, you know, we'll get to, you know, we'll get to these down, down, down the road in terms of, you know, what those, you know, should, should look like. But, um, you know, again, guys, there's so much in this business that we can't control. I'm a big believer and really trying to hone in and focus on the things that we can, right? Really hone in and focus on the things that you can control in your business. What, guys, if we were to strip it down, okay? If we were to strip it down and say, you can only do one thing, right? One lead measure, one activity, one thing in your business right now today or for the next 30 days, what would that be? What would that be for you, right? Is it phones, is it open houses, is it, you know, whatever, right? What is that one thing that moves the needle the most for you in your business right now? I've been on another soapbox right now, guys. Again, back to all these distractions and should I get this app? Should I spend on Zillow? Should I spend on, and I'm not saying to don't do all those things, right? I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm a, I'm a big believer. And if you have one thing that's working, why do anything else? You know, and again, I'm not saying don't diversify. I'm not saying don't add other channels, right, or other pillars into your business, right? But go all in. Go all in on what's working, right? If banging the phones, calling your database, calling your friends, connecting with people moves the needle the most, which is usually the answer for people, when I ask that, what's that one thing? Well, if I make phone calls, then my business takes off, right? Make phone calls. You know what I mean? Because again, guys, I know people just came out of Daniel's class and were like, you know, she just, the gal just said to me, and we were just talking, right? And he said, there's that's so much information, right? Like there's so, like where do I start? Like what do I do, right? Like I don't know if I should do this or that. And that's a common theme with X amount of agents across history, right? You know what I mean? Everybody is faced with that. You know, everybody at some point is gonna be faced with that issue. You know, so dialing it back to picking that one thing that's going to work. Because, guys, it all will work. It, it's, it all will work if you stay consistent with it. It will all work. You call enough businesses for channel accounts, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's going to be 50 calls or contacts. I don't know if it's going to be 500. But if you are dead set on doing it, right, and you don't stop and you stay consistent, I promise you it will happen, right? I promise you it will happen. You know, again, back to Steve Panate. Do you think his business exploded in his first video? Right? No. No, it didn't. But what are Steve's lead measures and live measures? It was doing it daily and how I get the results. So is Steve concerned how many people view his videos? Yeah. Not really. Is he concerned with how many people like them? How many people comment on them? How many people share them? No. He's be that's the lag, that's the, of course, guys, that's the scoreboard, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, right? Of course the bank account is the scoreboard, the, the scale is the scoreboard, the closings, the, the, all those things are the scoreboard, I'm not saying don't pay attention to that, right? But you can't control it. He backs it up and says, look, when I push out videos, then it happens, right? If I am focused on pushing out videos, right? That's my lead measure. That's what I can control. That's what I can do. If I focus on that, then the results will come, right? He stayed wildly consistent, and then the results happen, right? It's not rocket science, you know? Again, a lot of these things on here, guys, this isn't rocket science, right? There's no magic pill in this business. I hope you guys know that by now. There's not gonna be some shiny app or some shiny thing that comes along and says, this is the cure-all. If you do this, then your business will explode. Do you want the blue pill or the red one? You know what I mean? I got options. Which one do you guys want? Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, but again, guys, so does everyone kind of understand that concept? You know, lead, lead versus lag? Okay. 
Now let's uh, let's move on a little bit. What's the uh, what would you guys say is the number one challenge in any business? I don't care what you do, whether you're a real estate agent, whether you own a flower shop on the uh, flower shop down on the corner, um, whatever. What's the number one challenge in any business? Developing systems. Raw. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm, totally, I'm totally kidding. No, I mean that's a good answer. I mean. But if anyone's following along on their handout, which for the people watching, sorry, you guys don't have a handout, you just get me up here, my ugly mug. Sorry, I'm not sorry. Um, if you guys are following along, everyone should be able to say that obscurity, right? Obscurity. The guy or gal on the corner running a flower shop or the real estate agent in the room right here. Obscurity. Not enough people know who you are not enough people know what you do. Period. Period. Not enough people know who you are, not enough people know what you do. How, right, we can say obscurity and then I, I put attention, right? Getting attention, you could also say, is a, is a vital key to the success and the scale scalability of any business, right? We've all heard the, well, bad press is good press, right? You know, you know. I mean, if you guys, you know, I don't know if anyone, well, I don't want to go back on this subject of me going on tangents. But guys, how are you guys getting attention, right? How are you overcoming obscurity, okay? How are you getting in front of people, connecting with them, getting in front of them? Guys, there's so many tools out there right now, right? And I mean free tools. I'm not talking about shiny object tools. I'm talking about things that we're using on a daily basis. We all know the, the platforms, the social medias, the Facebooks, the Instagram, all those kinds of things. Guys, that's all free, right? This, the time that we are all living in right now, the time that we are all in is, is unmatched in history with the opportunities that we have at our fingertips for basically next to nothing. I mean, it's basically free other than your time, right? You know, you might have to spend some marketing dollars or some whatever, right? But when you, when you strip it back to, you know, the things that you guys can do for free, you know, to overcome that obscurity, to get attention, to make waves, you know, in the marketplace with your clients, friends, family, right? There's so much, it's, 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 it's I don't want to say it's easier because it's not easier. I don't want to. I don't want to give any. You know, you know, it's the, there's never been a better time than now, right? So we've been talking about a thing on the brokerage level, of, and it could be difficult the amount of agents that we have, right? But I'm just going to throw this out here. We've never, you know, on saying, look, guys, everyone in here should have some sort of system, some sort of quantity, of social media posts. Should we hold you guys, a, I mean, I don't know that we can, I don't know that we will, I don't know that we want to, but it's something that I'm thinking about. Like, should we have some sort of accountability platform in the amount of posts and activity that every single one with us you know, does, produces, right? Because it's just too easy, you know? I mean, connecting with everybody, every friend, every family member, everybody you have, and then putting that out on the channels, right? Putting it out there, it's, it's, it's easier than it's ever been, right? So should we have some sort of you know, baseline of like, look, be active, guys. I'm not posting my dinner, as you guys have known, if we're all connected you know, on FB, I'm not posting what I eat for dinner. With all respect to the people that do that, I'm not trying to take shots at anybody. But I mean, everyone <laughs> operates a different way, right? Like, that's not my style. Like, I try to come from the mindset of active, involved, and engaged, right? Active, involved, and engaged. Again, you want to talk about a CRM? I don't have it. You know, not me personally, but like maybe I don't have a CRM. You're sitting there saying, "Well, I just told you how to use the MLS as a CRM." You can use Facebook like a CRM. What does Facebook know about everyone you're connected with? Everything. <laughs> Everything. And not that you can necessarily get all that information from them, but I know for sure you can find out when their birthday is. I know for sure you can pay attention and see where the life events happen. Mm -hmm. I know that you can like and comment and engage, right? Share and do all those things to engage with your people, right? Stay current and top of mind and, and relevant. So guys, active, involved, and engaged. It's not hard, right? 
It's just taking, making a commitment to do it, right? It's not hard. Um, it also helps overcome that obscurity, right? Again, asking yourself every single day, how am I overcoming obscurity and how am I getting attention for myself and, and, and for my business, right? Which leads me right into BNB. What the heck is BNB? Guys, another foundation, another principle that's been in the core of us since day one that I hope to be able to instill in you guys, if it's not already instilled in you guys, is BNB. You guys are the business and the brand, right? I know my home group has to go on everything you guys do because we got to stay compliant, right? But you guys are the business and you are the brand. Jay Brew, you've been a leaderboard guy. You're, you're, you're a, you are the business. Jay Brew is the business. You are the brand, right? So you got your own look, your own feel, your own color scheme, your own whole deal, right? How do you connect the best? Like I talked about the human connection. How does that brand look and feel? You know, how does it connect? You are the brand. Guys, we want to put you in bright shining lights. We've always done that, right? I mean, it should be about, it is absolutely 110% about you. You are the business. You are the brand, right? You have to understand that 110%. So while you guys are the business, are you operating like a business? Who in here has a P&L? One, oh, yeah. two, three, two and a half. <laughs> Do you guys have a P&L? Mm -hmm. Right? And if the majority of the room says no, why not? <laughs> why not? Why do you guys not have a P&L? You guys are the business, right? You are a business owner, right? You need to walk, talk, act as if you're the business owner. You are the CEO, right? Do you guys interview for jobs? Do you guys interview for listings? No, the answer is no, because you don't. CEOs don't interview. CEOs don't interview for jobs. Becky Garcia doesn't interview for jobs. She doesn't interview for listings. She walks in and this is my freaking listing. I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna act, we're gonna do this, we should probably clear out that room. This is what we're gonna do when we go to market. We gotta do A, B, and C. I want you to start thinking about this, Mr. Self. I'm not interviewing, this is, this is my listing. I'm, I've, I've got, I got this, right? I am the CEO. As a CEO, do you have a P&L and are you running a true business? Guys, ROI, right, is, is simple. Right? Start putting some numbers down, start tracking your expenses, you know what I mean? Again, this should be everything from your car to the portion of your house that you use for your office, whatever it is, it all should start falling into a P&L, right? Um, but return on investment, for the most part, is pretty simple, right? I spent a thousand bucks with Zillow and it got me one deal, thousand dollars to make five grand, we'll do that deal every single time, right? Every single time. Right? Or maybe we spent a thousand dollars in three months till I got whatever it is, right? But I don't think enough people talk about ROT. Anyone have an idea what that is? Return on time. Return on time. So guys, as a business owner, because we're all business owners now, where are you spending your time? Right? Where are you spending your time? You guys we should all know, and everybody's guilty of this. Guys, I'm in the same boat, right? I'm in the same boat. I don't, I don't know down to a T where I'm spending every single minute or even 15 minute blocks. There's different exercises out there to say, you know, you could do like take a 40 hour work week and write down every 15 minutes what you're doing. Facebook, you know, email, you know, right? But you look back over a week and I promise you, it'll blow your mind. Blow your mind, the things that were actually spending time on, right? It's mind numbing, you know? But when we talk about our ROT, return on time, right? You can start to kind of, you can start to get a predictable business, okay? So we have our pillar of our activities. We know what we're gonna do. We can control it because it's our lead measure, right? Now we should know, what does the return on time look like? Okay, my pillar is, you know, open houses. 
right? I'm, I'm good face to face with people, right? Which always was my thing, by the way, is I love doing open houses. I love getting face to face with people. I love trying to you know, talk and nurture relationships and follow up like a savage and do all those things that it took to try to, to tr try to close deals, right? Mm -hmm. So for every five open houses I do, I get you know, 50 people that come through. For every 50 people, I got five prospects. I got two escrows. And those aren't my real numbers. I'm just spitballing numbers here, right? So you can then say, look, for every five open houses I do, it turns into two escrows, right? I'm working $300,000 price points. That's a tremendous living, right? Making 18,000 a month, right? But what if I wanna make double that, right? You should be able to know where your time is going, what it's spent on, right? And be able to up it or bring it back, right? Again, I can't say it enough. We're always looking for the next shiny object. We've got the syndrome of looking for this next shiny object in this industry. Right? But picking those one or two things and then guys, evaluating the things. Look, you call you call a thousand businesses and you get no results, that might not be your thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We might need to scale down and try something up, right? But you should know for every thousand businesses I reach out to, I get how many people on the phone, I get how many good conversations, I get how many relationships, and it turns into what? Right? Same thing with open houses, same thing with how many dials, same thing with how many doors I'm gonna knock on. You guys can get a predictable business if you know your return on time, if you know the numbers for your time, right? You should know that. We should all know where we're spending the majority of our time. We should all know what our pillars are. We should all know, you know what's getting us the best return on our time, not just financially, because that, again, that's easy to spend X to get X or what, but, it's a much harder process and much deeper process to truly get that return on time, right? Um, guys, I think every business owner, every top producer on planet Earth controls their schedule, right? Controls their schedule, goes on the offensive as much as they possibly can, right? Guys, when are you the most productive throughout the day? I mean, it's different. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's the morning. Maybe if it's, maybe if you're Russell Shaw that gets up at eleven o'clock in the morning, that's doing Facebook posts at three o'clock in the morning. Like, <laughs> maybe it's not eight a.m. and it's more like noon where you're the most productive, right? You know. So guys, the high, the high level fruit during those times, right? Not the low, not the not the low hanging fruit, but finding out when you're the most productive in your day, and get the high, high hanging fruit. Get the big stuff. Do the prospecting. Do the high-level calls. Do the important things, right? The one or two things that move the needle the most in your business. When should you do that? When you're tired at the end of the day and your battery's on freaking 6%, and I mean as an individual, not your phone, right? Mm -hmm. Should I do my prospecting then at 5 o'clock when I'm tired and beat? I just want to go home to my, my, my boys or my family, right? No. no. It should be done when you when you – so part of that is controlling – your schedule and going on the offensive at the time at the times that it, it is best suited for you. And guys, what else? What else in this industry right now? Again, with all these distractions and all these things coming at you. What are we laughing at? She's giving me a timer back there? <laughs> she knows I'm gonna go long. I I mean I'm really like trying to like condense this down, but it's okay. Um, but again, taking the time to go on off on the offensive, blocking out your schedule. Maybe if you're gonna do, guys, if, if, you're, if your business isn't where it should be right now today, this very minute, if your income isn't where it should be right now, this very minute, you should be prospecting at least two hours a day. I mean, at least, at least. So this should be blocked out in your schedule. It should be color-coded green because it's money-making time, right? Again, you guys can control that, and if distractions get in the way, those are the things you need to move, remove. And what I was kind of getting at is, again, back to all these, these distractions and these shiny objects and all these things that are coming at us on a daily basis. The people that are the most productive, right? How, how can we be the most productive? We all have the same amount of time in a day and a week and all this, right? What, what makes the 20%, right? We've all heard the 80-20 rule. How does the 20% operate? How are they the 20%, right? And the 80%, what? Look, 
we've uh, you know we've all we've all been we've all been there if we're not right now right we've all been a part of the 80 percent how do how where do we fall short right is that we don't follow through and we don't do the things that we know that we should be doing 100 percent of us for the most part give or take because everyone in this room looking around is intelligent smart sad you know the whole thing we all know what needs to be done right where do we fall short we just don't do it right this gets in the way that gets in the way you know, my kids, my this, I'm sick. I'm, guys, life happens, right? Life happens. So then when we start talking about, when we start talking about goal setting, right? We start talking about our lead measures. Those need to be specific, measurable, and trackable. Okay? So it's not like I want to expand my brand in the next 30 days. Like, what does that mean? Like, you can't, it's not quantifiable, right? Specific, measurable, and trackable. And if you guys want to get accountability partner, I highly encourage that. If you want me to be your account accountability partner, I'm, I'm, up, I'm up for that too, right? But what I would want or what I would require is that you come to us or to whoever and it's specific, measurable, and trackable. In the next 30 days, I'm going to do 20 open houses, right? Jay, did you do it? You did it? High five. Well, there you go. I didn't know. If you, there you go. High, high five, right? You did it. High five. Awesome. What are the results? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about getting people off the fence. Let's talk about converting them. Let's talk about the appointment. Let's talk about all the things we can do to convert the sale. <clears throat> if you didn't do it, guys, what got in the way? What got in the way? You know, that's another thing that we should be asking ourselves on a regular basis. What got in the way? There's people upstairs that have that on their wall right now. What got in the way? What can you remove? Every elite producer on planet Earth says no. Every business owner on planet Earth or top executive says no. If it doesn't fit, guys, if it doesn't fit within your most important, call them wildly important goals, right, then you have to say no. Right? You have to say no. That's part of controlling your, your, your schedule. Right? It's part of controlling your calendar. It's part of not letting things creep into your day that aren't serving your one or two wildly important goals. Right? You have to say no and get rid of those things. Controlling your schedule. You guys, planning your schedule, saying no more often, you know, allowing the things that you're going to say yes to be the true things that can help grow your business or help get you to the next level, right? And then reflecting. Guys, <clears throat> sit back at the end of the day and reflect, and reflect on your business. Reflect on your day. Reflect on your open house. Reflect on the conversations that you have with people. What could I have done? What could I have done better? Guys, don't lose any sleep over it, okay, because you can't go backwards, right? Take it as an opportunity to try to learn and get better, right? Every single well, I don't want to say every single, just about every business owner that I know, top executive I know, top agent, whatever it may be, absolutely ask themselves on a daily basis with every single thing they're doing, how can I get better? How can this be better? Right? I'm trying to crunch a two-hour class in the 60 minutes right now that I normally do, or 90 minutes in the 60 minutes. How can I do this better? Right? I mean, that's just one thing. You're prospecting. How can, how can it be more efficient? If, you're, if you're, one of your pillars is going to be open houses, how can you get them better? How can you market them better? How can you put them on more channels more easily and efficiently? Are you constantly asking yourself, how am I getting better? How can I do this better? Right? Same thing in our relationships on a personal level. Right? Relationships with our you know, boyfriends, girlfriends, spouse, kids. You know, <clears throat> How can you make those better? How can you do it better? Right? I mean, Bill Gates can walk in and out of a 30-minute meeting without asking 19 times the staff of, are we doing this the best way? Is this the most efficient? Right? How can we conduct a more efficient meeting? Let's have a meeting on conducting more efficient meetings. You know what I mean? That's kind of, that's kind of the idea. You know, but I think, uh, every, like I said, every business owner on planet Earth is constantly asking themselves, how can I get better? Um, guys, the last piece of this, and then we'll wrap it up, and we'll get into a little, you know, you know, Q and A. If you guys have anything like that, um, I'm happy to, you know, do those things. But, um, guys, at the end of the day, whether you're 
deciding what are the things, where should I start, what should I do. Guys, nothing is going to be taking action, right? There, there, nothing will be just absolutely going. You don't have to be, guys, I've, I've had some success in this business, right, on the production side. Obviously, you know, growing a, a decent size, you know, brokerage side. I've also had some success in other businesses. Guys, I'm going to be the first one to tell you right now, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, okay? I'm not, I didn't go to college. Well, I pretended I did, but I didn't really go to college. I didn't graduate, we know that much, right? I'm not the smartest, I'm not the most savvy, I'm not the best negotiator, I don't have the, most, the best business skills, but one thing I've always done is I've, I've been a pit bull, right? I, I will chew your, what does a pit bull do? They're not gonna stop, they're gonna chew your leg off, right? They're not gonna stop. If you guys can internalize having that mentality, you don't have to be prepared I mean, within reason, guys. <laughs> within reason. I don't want to say just go out there and just wing it and, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not saying that. Don't, don't, don't get me confused, right? But, you know, people sometimes want to be overly prepared. Like, I, my buyer presentation must be rock solid. Like, no, just go. My listing presentation. Like, I'm not ready to go on a listing presentation. I need someone to come. Like, just go. Just go. We've all heard the line, you know, Michael Jordan, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? Just go. I come back to a close buddy of mine. He's actually not even with his, with our broker, so I'm probably gonna break his leg soon. But he first day in the business didn't even have business cards. Grabbed three open house signs from him, two from her, four from over here, and just started going. Didn't have business cards. Didn't have his own open house signs. Had 19 different branded signs. <laughs> but what did he do? He just went and he hustled and he hasn't stopped. The guy's doing 30 million a year right now. Right? He's not he's also not the smartest guy in the room and the most experienced, but the guy absolutely works his tail off. Right? He outworks everybody around him. So the whole point of what I say here is taking that action and really internalizing the best that we can to have that pit bull mentality. Right? To say I'm gonna outwork everybody around me. I'm gonna absolutely, you know, I'm gonna absolutely hustle as, as hard as I possibly can. And guys, I'm not saying that you need to go out there and work uh, you know, 80 hours a week, right? Some people, it's just not feasible. We have lives and we have commitments, we have families and this and that, right? But like I've talked about earlier already, if you have X amount of time, how do you maximize it? How do you get better, right? How do you maximize the time that you have to make it the most efficient as you possibly can? You might be in another industry right now. You know, we just had Andrew Glenn on the dose, if anybody heard that last week, working a full-time job, doing several million in production a year, working a full-time job, right? He wanted it. Guys, how bad do you want it? How bad do you truly want it? You know? That's something that we, ha looking back, I didn't, we didn't even know what we were doing. But looking back, Mark and I sat down and said, this is what we want to do. Right? And some people are like, uh, good luck. Go get them, kid. And some people are like, oh, I, you know, I think you guys could do it. Right? But we believed in ourselves. Right? We made what the hardest part is, and all of this, guys, the hardest part is making the decision. Truly, truly making the decision that you are going to do it. Head, heart, gut, soul, whatever you want to say you are going to do this, right? You're gonna go from a new agent to do an X amount. You're gonna go from 300 deals, I know you're not satisfied, you wanna to get to 350, you wanna to get to 400. Making the decision, I am going to do this and I'm not gonna be stopped, nothing is gonna get in my way, right? I understand life happens and things happen and again, life happens, right? But it's getting back on track. It's like you're so crystal clear on what you want, we were so crystal clear on what we wanted. Right? And while we waver, people, you know, waver, or they drift, right? We came back and we said we're staying on it, we're staying consistent. Guys, we went in the red for years, okay? <laughs> we sacrificed our back pockets for years. And look, you guys are all right now have the most opportunity. You guys have the most blue sky right now in this room because all the money I'm telling you right now is in sales, period. You see all these people around our industry to go and start other businesses and whether they're successful or not, it all comes back, getting back into sales. 
right? All the money's in sales, period, right? So you guys have that opportunity to make God knows how much money, right? To have God knows how much success. But again, coming back to it and saying, I'm gonna commit. You have to commit. You have to go all in, right? If you wanna do it, you have to go all in. I love the line, commit first, figure the rest out later, right? Commit and go. You'll figure it out. You'll get there. You'll make some mistakes. You'll get off track, right? But you'll, if you fail forward, right, you're going to make some mistakes. you got to make mistakes. We made a ton of mistakes. We set money on fire. <laughs> like literally, just like get a lighter, like get a lighter out and just set it on fire, right? We did a lot of dumb things. But we stayed consistent. We stayed true to ourselves. We believed in ourselves. Guys, people are going to tell you you're going to fail, right? People are going to tell you you can't do it. People are going to tell you you can't get the 50 deals a year, right? You better believe it more than anyone else is going to, ever. You better believe in yourself more than anyone else is going to. I'm telling you, people pat us on the butt and say, good luck, guys, go get it. You know what I mean? All right. Don't be our partner, all right? We'll show you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's having that, right? So mastering those two or three, two or three offensive activities, guys, and being wildly consistent with it. Mm -hmm. Guys, consistency is the new currency. Consistency is the new currency. The ones that are pit bulls, the ones that are working their tail off, the ones that are consistent, the ones that are continuing to deliver, those are the ones that are getting paid. Wow. Right? Oh, someone's listening to me online too. <laughs> there you go. Be wildly consistent, right? Um, guys, I put down the, the bottom of the sales funnel. Like, I don't, this is all over the place, right? Everyone's talked about a sales funnel. You can Google a sales funnel, but I just put it out, we don't really have time to go into this. But again, you guys, you cast the huge net with the activities, right? What activities am I putting into the world or, or, or putting out in the marketplace? How am I bringing people into my world, right? So it starts with the activities. If I get the activities, then it generates leads, okay? Once I have leads, can I make an appointment, right? Once you make an appointment, can you conduct it? How are we conducting our appointments, right? And then from conducting an appointment, it should turn into a client, should turn into escrow, and should turn into getting paid, right? And then you take that person and you drop them right back to the top, right? What activity can I now do to connect with them, connect, to add value to them? How can I be a resource to them, right? I think that's where a lot of us fail. Again, we close a sale and it's like, peace out, good luck, right? Let me know when you wanna sell. Right? versus dropping people right back at the top of the funnel and asking ourselves, what can I do to add value? How can I be a resource? How can I help them? You know, 30-day checkup calls, what do you need? How's it going? Any, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, guys, any, any questions? Can I elaborate on anything at all? Sir? How can we schedule time with you or a broker? Let's just, we'll just put on the books. Yeah, we can link up our schedules or, or whatever, you know, get out of here. You don't want to talk about, like, the D-backs or whatever, do you? I'm just kidding. My bad jokes aren't resonating with you today. It's okay. Uh, I, I just, <laughs> I just <laughs> I mean, um, no, if, if it's if it's a long, you know, like I said, we love to have these conversations. So guys, anybody, I mean, you know, just reach out to myself, to Mark, put something on the books. Um, you know, again, for the folks out there, if you guys, if you guys want to grow, again, I imagine everybody in the room wants to do that. You guys are here for a reason, right? You're trying to, you're trying to, you know, expand your mind and trying to grow your business and you guys are all committed, you're all here taking the time, right? So we want to reinvest in you guys too, you know? I mean, absolutely 100%. So um, reach out to me, call, text, email, whatever you guys want to do, or, or Mark, both of us, we'll schedule time, get on the books. So uh, anyone else? I know I went fast and furious today, guys. Normally I like to expand a little bit more talk about more, you know, uh, uh, business, I guess, fundamentals, this kind of things I should cut short a little bit. Uh, but again, these are all just common principles I think that you guys all need to internalize, understand, and, and ultimately become world class in, right? If you guys can become world class in all these things that are on this page, I promise you it will happen. Absolutely, 100%. And guys, last thing before we wrap it up. I think we all need to understand this too, is being a business owner. It's going to take more time than you thought. And it's going to be more expensive than you thought, right? <laughs> yeah. Period. Period. It's not going to happen overnight. You might get lucky. <laughs> you might spike a deal. You know, be like Bryce and you know and Stephanie. I always come back to them. Like spike a deal first day, 
right? Literally got their license and they're under contract on a deal for a buyer like the same day. You might get lucky. You might get a channel account boom right out of the gate. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying it's lucky. I'm just saying that you might have, you know, pieces, the stars might align for you, right? But generally speaking, the stars don't align, right? Generally speaking, it takes time, right? Which is money. So either which way. It always takes more time than you think. It's always more expensive than you think. People look at us all the time and like, oh, you guys are this overnight success. Like, you guys came out of nowhere. Like, we've been open since 2005. You know what I mean? We've had the broker since 2005. You know, we have failed a ton. We've had a lot of years of not being successful. Not that we're there yet, but I mean, the point is, is that, right, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. So stay consistent, right? Stay focused, keep believing in yourself, right, more than anyone else is going to, and it will happen. So, rock and roll, party people. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know the camera was on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should have looked into the camera more. Hey, Jeremy, good job. Hey, you know, I do what I can. Next time we'll have a shiny, beautiful, well-designed PowerPoint. Okay, I sent you over a text. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll, uh, let me get back up to the computer and we'll, we'll uh, schedule time. No, I appreciate it. Do I need to hit this?